The newest members of the International Space Station crew are veteran space flyers, all eager for another opportunity to make a contribution to the future of human exploration. Dr. Koichi Wakata was born and raised in Saitama, a bedroom community of Tokyo. He remembers watching the first moon landing on television and wishing he could fly in space. But since there were no Japanese astronauts then, he put the dream aside as impractical. But he had other interests, including baseball and airplanes. I was really fascinated uh, uh, by airplanes ever since I was a small boy. And I always want to, uh, wanted to become an engineer or a pilot uh, to, to make and fly um, an airplane. Wakata pursued that dream at Kyushu University, where he earned a bachelor's degree in aeronautical engineering and a master's in applied mechanics, and then started his career as a structural engineer for Japan Airlines. Two years later, when Japan's space agency advertised for astronaut candidates, Wakata applied and was selected in 1992 to begin astronaut training at NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston. In 1996, he was Japan's first ever space shuttle mission specialist on a flight where he ran the shuttle's robot arm to deploy and retrieve satellites. In 2000, he used his robotics expertise again on the shuttle flight that installed the Z-1 truss and a pressurized mating adapter on the International Space Station. After he finished his doctorate in aeronautical engineering from Kyushu University in 2004, he completed training in Russia as a Soyuz spacecraft flight engineer, and then in 2009 became Japan's first space station crew member as a part of expeditions 18, 19, and 20, and expanded his robotics repertoire to include Canadarm2, Dexter, and the robotic arm on Japan's Kibo laboratory module. He's eager to keep doing what he can to prepare the way for future exploration and improve life on Earth. I think we can gain uh, new knowledge, new technologies that we benefit uh, in our daily life uh, on the ground by going to space. And also, I strongly believe a uh, human space program is a vehicle um, for the survival of human species. Michael Turin was born in Kolomna, Russia, an historical town outside Moscow. But he lived in many places around the country, growing up in a military family. His interest in spaceflight did not focus on becoming a cosmonaut himself. I did not um, have a period of my life when I was dreaming and doing all, my, all I could. Um, uh, overcoming difficulties to become a cosmonaut. I just loved this um, area. And he focused on getting as close to it as he could. Turin earned a degree in engineering from the Moscow Aviation Institute and went right to work for the Rocket Space Corporation Energia as an engineer, first specializing in ballistics and software development and later in methods of training cosmonauts, methods he usually tried out on himself first. After nine years on the job, he was selected to join the Cosmonaut Corps. Turin made three spacewalks during his first trip to the International Space Station in 2001 as a flight engineer on Expedition 3, and two more EVAs as flight engineer on Expedition 14 in 2006 and 2007. He's pleased to be contributing to physiological research that will prepare humans for future space exploration and even more interested in how some of the psychological results will be applied on Earth. They can be used not just in uh, space exploration, but can be propagated and applied uh, to human relations uh, in general, and uh, much more in, Japan, in demand in various areas uh, of our uh, human activity, human life. Rick Mastracchio is a native of Waterbury, Connecticut, and grew up there in the 1960s interested in the space program, but not with the idea that he'd ever fly in space himself. When I was a small kid, I didn't know you could even be an astronaut. It never occurred to me I could be an astronaut someday. But I was always interested in math and science. I was always interested when the teacher spoke about uh, aviation-related topics or space science-related topics You know, when I was in grade school. He took those interests to the University of Connecticut, the first person in his family ever to go to college, and earned a Bachelor of Science degree in electrical engineering and computer science, 
which got him a job at Hamilton Standard developing guidance and flight control systems while he finished a Master's of Science in Electrical Engineering at Rensselaer Polytechnic. At that time, he saw an ad from NASA looking for new astronauts and decided to apply. What he got was a job offer from Rockwell to work in shuttle operations, and he moved to Houston in 1987. Three years later, he joined NASA as an engineer specializing in software development, then became a flight controller in ascent and entry guidance and procedures, and was selected as an astronaut in 1996 after nine years of applying. His first space shuttle flight was the 2000 mission that outfitted the International Space Station's new Zvezda module for its first permanent crew. He made three spacewalks during his second trip to the station in 2007 on a mission that delivered a truss segment and a new gyroscope, and three more EVAs on a 2010 resupply mission. He sees this station as a means to support inevitable exploration well beyond the neighborhood of this blue planet. We are meant to explore, we being the people here on this planet Earth. We want to go out and see what's out there. We want to know more about things, and we can't just do that through robotic systems. We have to send people to see things up close and personal.